um, some well, keys take holders three for three days, sorry. Uh, some key stakeholders have been participating from the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the Sports Writers Association of Ghana, Professional Footballers Association of Ghana, the Referees Association of Ghana, and um, other interested groups who have come here and spent time to brainstorm on the key issues affecting the game, um, where things aren't going too well, we look at strengthening it, and when things, where things are going well, we look at enhancing it. So, um, we thank you very much for coming here this afternoon. And the president of the Ghana Football Association would first like to make some opening words before he will make uh, the announcements of what decisions we've taken following off from this meeting. Mr. President. All right. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the media. We are very happy to have you here this afternoon. And as you are no doubt aware, this is uh, the end of the brainstorming session organized by the Executive Committee to interact with key uh, stakeholders in the business of football. And so over the past three days, we've been deeply engaged in discussing all the thematic uh, areas of of, of the game of football here. And I'd like to first thank the executive committee members for spending all their three days here. Uh, the staff of the secretariat, the directors of the secretariat, the representatives of the various stakeholders, including Dr. Uwo Swansa, who was the representative of the Honorable Minister for Youth and Sports. The PFAG was represented, RAG was region, represented, uh, swag duly represented and, and other key stakeholders. Uh, uh, this was a very detailed, thorough discussion on all aspects of the management of the game. And at the end of the day, certain decisions were taken which are uh, ready for immediate implementation. There are others which will require the approval of Congress to become effective or become a uh, law and for implementation. So without much ado, I'll just take you through the highlights and then my other colleagues may fill you in with the details. But imagine that we spent three days to discuss issues. I'm not, I won't be able to do all, to do a, 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 a presentation that will cover a detailed uh, account of each and every one of them, but just the highlights. The first issue I'd like to draw your attention to is the decision to restructure the, the leagues, the, competi the various competitions we have, including the Ghana Premier League. Uh, we, we're going to restructure it. The current PLB will be constituted into a board. It doesn't have to meet daily or weekly as it presently does, but it will be meeting periodically, maybe monthly or quarterly. But we're going to employ experts to fill certain functional roles or functional positions with the league. So we're going to have a general manager and uh, we're going to have directors, at least three directors, one responsible for the media, one responsible for marketing, and then the other responsible for competition. These will be full-time staff whose preoccupation will be to carry out specific duties relating to their function. And uh, they will manage the Premier League on a day-to-day -day basis together with the Division One League and then the FA Cup competition. This is a structure that is akin to countries which have a semi-autonomous structure that runs the league, like the PSL, like the German Bundesliga, and, and so forth and so on. These are experts who will be running the league and we will count a lot uh, on them and also set targets for them to meet in the discharge of their functions. We also realize that certain issues have become very topical and connected with the league, uh, like match fixing allegations, uh, media issues, uh, and then coaching and refereeing issues. So prior to the start of the season, we'll be organizing seminars for the media. FIFA has already agreed to provide experts to the Football Association to organize a seminar on match fixing 
to create the awareness and educate people on the dangers inherent in match fixing. We'll also be doing a technical study meeting for all the coaches of the Premier and First Division Leagues who took part in the season last year for them to do an appraisal of performances of the players and they the coaches themselves. On our judicial organs, we're also going to do a review and that review will look at some amendments in our regulations and statutes. We're going to enhance sanctions for infringement on the rights of sponsors, rights and benefits of benef uh, enjoyment of benefits by sponsors. You recall during the immediately preceding season, there were cases in which sponsors like start times were prevented or obstructed from discharging their responsibilities. We're going to uh, we're proposing very stiff sanctions for that. And the stiffest sanction that a club will suffer is usually the forfeiture of, of a match. And so if we prevent a sponsor from covering a match, you lose the match, you lose the points. We will not even waste our time uh, ensuring that the match takes place. We are also going to propose to Congress to consider the introduction of a sole judge or a single judge in, in exceptional circumstances in order to uh, contribute to an expedi expeditious hearing of cases before our judicial uh, bodies. And then we are also concerned about delays of cases at our judicial body. So we are going to review the processes for filing of cases. At the moment, you file a statement of case, a defense, and a reply. We are reviewing it to make room for only a case and a, response, a defense. There will be no requirement of a reply. And then the days for filing cases has been three working days. We are reducing it to two days. And that will reduce the time for adjudication of cases before the GFA. We, the GFA is introducing new regulations of marketing. This is the first time the association will be having marketing regulations. And these marketing regulations are intended to attract sponsors and also retain existing sponsors. Provide stiff sanctions against people whose behaviors discourage sponsors from coming on board. And also certain conducts that are inimical to the interests of sponsors are all being spelled out. It's a 37-page document that copiously uh, elaborates and spells out various duties of the clubs, their responsibilities, and sanctions attaching to certain misconduct. Mm -hmm. We also looked at the interests of players, and we're going to continue to engage with PFAG to support players through pension schemes and insurances that will uh, undertake or underwrite costs relating to uh, the treatment of injuries. And we also encourage PFAG to work closely with RENFAC to ensure that players are duly represented at our annual congresses and their interests well articulated. On women's football, we're going to provide more support for women's football. GFA, uh, apart from the Sanford FA Cup competition, GFA is the sole sponsor for women's football. We'll continue to sponsor women's football at an enhanced level, and uh, we want to uh, give more meaning and support to women's football. Uh, to this effect, we'll be proposing to Congress to create an additional slot on the Executive Committee exclusively for women. Even though Ms. Linia Adi is the representative of women on the FA ESCO, she is there as a rep of the constituent bodies. So if the next time coaches or referees think that she's had uh, enough of her tenure, they can ask her to step aside. But we think that this is an era where we have to encourage women. It's not about Linia Adi as a person, but it's about women. So beyond her, any other woman it could be you, any of you here, or another woman who will take up the seat. But we will have a permanent seat on the executive committee for women. We also discuss youth football. It is an issue of uh, extreme importance to us. And so the GFA has decided that uh, the national under 15 competition will continue as a national, uh, a regional select site for each of. Uh, it will, it will continue as representatives of the regions. So each regional, each region will present a regional team. But 
the current practice where we have clubs playing under 15, under 13, under 17 will continue and we'll explore opportunities to seek sponsorship for our youth competitions. In addition to that, we will also be working we'll also be working to strengthen and provide more competitions for youth football in this connection from the 2018 2017 2018 2019 football season we are going to ask all premier division clubs to own an under 17 team each one will be required to own an under 17 team we used to have under 20 and play the reserve league and then we abolish it we are reintroducing an under 17 and that will be uh, part of our efforts to fulfill the requirements of the <coughs> club licensing system and so the under 17 clubs of the premier division clubs will play as cutting razors to every premier league match in the country we're also going to review and enhance the regulations on uh, football academies in the country we want to recognize academies and provide a regulatory framework for the management of football academies in the country. On funding for youth football, which has been uh, a canker, we are going to engage Galka, the president of Galka was here, Mr. Fianu. We're going to engage them further and, and agree on ways to uh, provide financial support for, for, for youth football. The GFA is proposing that the revenue that we get from international player transfers. At the moment, every international player transfer, uh, the FA earns 10% of that, uh, the club pays that. And then half of that is given to GAFA, Re GFA retains half of that. We are proposing that we should put all that money into a pool for youth football. In addition to that, our gate proceeds from Premier League games, we want to set aside an agreed percentage from both what GAFA earns and the GFA into the pool so we can have a regular a stream of funding for, for juvenile football. In addition to that, we'll also be pursuing sponsorship options for juvenile uh, football. The executive committee also considered uh, issues about the forward program. Uh, uh, we reviewed the activities of the regional football associations. Uh, we also looked at our technical directorate uh, refereeing and so forth and so on. One of the things that we'll be doing coming next season to discourage uh, corruption or our crusade against corruption, because corruption is always uh, committed by two people. When people give bribe, it is both the giver and the receiver involved. Until one exposes the other, it's very difficult to, 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 to catch them in the act. So we're going to put aside an incentive package for anyone who will come forward to report any corrupt practices. So if a referee is approached by a club official, we're encouraging them to report the club, of, uh, club official. We are proposing a 20,000 Ghana CD uh, prize money for anyone who comes forward to report uh, any case of bribery with evidence, not an allegation. You cannot just come and say, this man has gone to take a bribe. It's not enough. You must add evidence so that it will be credible. We can't throw good money away. And uh, it is one of the ways that we want to discourage, to institute, uh, as I said, this, uh, to discourage people from engaging in uh, bribery and corrupt uh, practices. These are just a few highlights. If you ask questions, uh, I may elaborate. But my colleague, executive committee members, are seated here. Uh, even after me, you can engage them. If you have any detailed uh, demand, you want a detailed explanation on issues, specific issues, you can, on youth football, Mr. Year can speak to that. On women's football, Ms. Adi can speak to that. On our competitions, Mr. Okriku can speak to that. On referee, hmm? on marketing, Frank Nelson will speak to that. You can talk to them. They are not supposed to be granting interviews after I have spoken, but on this particular day, they've been given a special dispensation <laughs> to, <laughs> to talk on issues even when I've spoken on it, because we think that this summit has, done, has gone very well and they are all contributors to the success of it and we want to share all the information with you. We also, we want to build a strong relationship with the media. We want to 
build a strong relationship. We want to engage SWAC to uh, help SWAC to understand what we do better. They already know, but we want to provide more information. We want to work with SWAC to organize seminars for the media so that the media can also interrogate our activities further. And we believe that both the media and the GFA are partners with a common objective of developing their game. Uh, it doesn't lie in anybody's interest if there are problems here and there. We don't also claim to be angels, and so we make mistakes and we expect criticisms, but we believe that it should just remain criticisms and not insults. But the irony of the whole thing is that uh, the standards of journalism that we knew when we were growing up, um, uh, which was clearly espoused by people like Kwabna Yabwa, Juagri, uh, Carl Tufour, uh, Felix Abaita, those generation of journalists, it's regrettable that they did not hand over the standards beyond their generation. No, it's a fact. No, 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 it's a fact. I don't, it's a fact. It's a fact, it's a fact. It's a fact. The standards, regrettably, for me as a person, you know that I have court cases with people and that is the reason for it. I don't regret for going to court. And I can assure you, just the few court cases I file, I have more court cases to file. And just to, 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 it's just to clear my name, that's all. I'm not interested in compensation from anybody. And, and, and that is it. So the point I want to emphasize is that we want to work with the media. Let's put aside our personal prejudices, likes or dislikes for people. The GFA is not about Christian Antichi or Nab or Yia or Ibrahim San. It's about Ghana football. If you don't even like me, just put me aside and concentrate on the work. And I believe that as professionals, we should also focus on issues rather than personalities. Mrs. Uh, uh, Roosevelt, the, the wife of the former president of the United States, used to say that uh, great minds talked about issues and small minds talked about people, you know. So let's, let's work together and then develop the game together. It's very, very important. On that note, I want to thank you very much. People are thinking that I'm straying away. I'm not straying. You've spent about a Mr. President, you spoke about so many things that were discussed. Everyone agrees with me that because of the judicial system, the calendar of the Ghana Premier League has been changed. As you just said, have you empowered them, or are you going to empower them to ensure that cases brought before them, people are charged, people who are mandated to ensure that the administration of football in this country, they rather go on air and make some allegations against each other. Are these people going to be charged and sanctioned? for that they should be Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the issues we discuss here, and that is uh, a matter that falls within the jurisdiction of the Ethics Committee. Uh, it's strange that the very people who uh, claim to own clubs or have the interests of clubs at heart are the same people who run down the products, and it's regrettable. So we've empowered the Ethics Committee to take up these issues and two things. One, to expedite the hearing of such cases and also uh, uh, award or dish out enhanced punishment against those people. It's very regrettable. Yes. Well, this one has been uh, a bit different from the previous ones. But we do yearly reviews. The character in nature has changed a bit. We used to do it in Accra at the session of the executive committee and sometimes at Congress. We spent just one day. But this time, we decided to spend more time because of the volume of work and the increasing interest that uh, has been shown in football and the importance of all the subjects connected with football. We also realized that it's important to age and uh, engage people outside the executive committee and hear their views. So this might be a regular feature uh, on an annual basis like bots and other public companies do 
as retreats. It's a corporate practice across the world that we've adopted and we believe it will enhance the value of the decisions we take at the Football Association. Yes. Yeah, synchronizing the league is also an issue of major concern to us. The World Cup will be in June, June, middle of June next year. We're going to start our season next year, January. January, February, the league, the season should start. And then we hope that it will not clash with the World Cup. We may do an accelerated program to finish the first round before the World Cup. And then uh, we can either stop and watch the World Cup. Or also, the other option is for the PLB to... Uh, schedule games that will not clash with World Cup fixtures. So you may have a World Cup game coming up. Uh, let's say Russia is plus three, GMT plus three. We may have to play our league games probably in the morning or early afternoon in order to avoid clashes with the World Cup schedules. Even though Ghana is not going, the interest in the World Cup is still paramount and we know it will have an effect on the league. Yes. I don't understand mm. that. What he, he's mean? asking if we are, we might change our mm. schedules not to clash with <coughs> Premier League matches. Ah, uh, scheduling, yes. scheduling yes. of our games. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We scheduling is key, 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 key. Yeah. We're going to have somebody whose duty will, among others, include scheduling, scheduling of games. There is one new thing that I, I didn't mention. Let me share with you. Uh, from next year, we'll be introducing uh, what is called the center coordination, uh, what do you call it? No, 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 the, the center that will be coordinating the matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Coordination match, we, we introduce what is called a match coordination center. If we go to Europe during UEFA games, you have a match coordination center. And it is a center that coordinates games that are played during the day. No, it's not. This, this will ensure that, first of all, all the programs we have for the matches are enforced. We're going to improve communication at the, at the match venues. Internet, there will be a link between each venue and the match coordination uh, center. Uh, in Europe, they even have televisions linked there. So you watch all the games in that room, and then people are watching. Pitch panels, have they been well placed? Uh, this team is supposed to wear this jersey. Have they put on the parchment? Uh, have they done the interviews, pre-match, uh, flash interview, post-match interview? All these things are watched then the time that the match should be played. All these things are watched. And it is in, to ensure that promises that you offer sponsors are duly delivered. So there will be scheduling, which will be approved, and then delivery of schedules and other benefits are also uh, enforced. We want to increase professionalism in, in, in the management of the, and attract sponsors. Uh, the marketing regulations are going to aid in that because there are sanctions there, there are rules and responsibilities that we are providing sponsors and clubs and these are all intended to 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 and we also want to avoid clashes as much as possible even even the spanish league <laughs> which is the best league in the world they avoid the english premier league they don't allow schedules to clash with the epl the epl is the most marketed league in the world even the german bundesliga they avoid the english premier league we also avoid the english premier league so that we can have people following our league we have we will be announcing a few sponsorship uh, offers, not title sponsorship yet. We are still engaged in discussion, but there are category sponsors who are coming on board. Some of them are targeting even spectators to reward people who come to the stadium and watch matches. There will be raffles uh, drawn with tickets that you, you purchase to enter the games, and they will be giving prizes, electronic prizes and other prizes that will reward uh, the, the spectators for coming to watch the matches. So. We may be doing some few unveilings that will be of interest to our fans.
Yes. Uh, I was watching someone. I want to know about this case. If you discuss it, it's not about protecting the media person. Sometimes anything is supposed to be from the hands of the supporters of the <laughs> but too many comments. But I, I appreciate your admission that we're doing well in youth football. And this is in clear contradistinction to some of the erroneous views held out there that football is dead, youth football is dead. It's it sounds strange. But it doesn't mean we've done what we all expect. There's still room for improvement. And uh, with this observation made, the ministers rep reiterated it yesterday when we met about the compensation uh, package for young players. We agreed that we should concentrate on the necessaries of life. For a young person, it's food, clothing, shelter, education. Uh, we should move away from the system where young boys like that are given thousands of dollars and some of them misuse or abuse the money. And then, and then we should be interested in the education. I think the English team was at the World Cup, even had teachers for these boys, because most of them are from schools. We should rather pay attention to that and provide such opportunities for the young boys. And uh, that really is the policy of the FA, that we must encourage young boys and girls to combine education with football. That's why we have the academy in Pram Pram. We, it hasn't taken effect yet, but the strategy is to send them there when they are 15 years. They do two years, play for the under, national under 17, and then they move on. So we are very much interested in every aspect of the future of our young boys and girls. And I'll personally take up the issue of engaging these boys to see if they can rewrite their exams. They should know that it's important for them to complete their education. We have seen it clearly demonstrated in women's football where a lot of our girls went to the United States on scholarship. And today, some who have retired from soccer have established their families and they are in various professions. Some are accountants, nurses, and what have you. So you don't become a burden on, on society. You know. The other issue about uh, statistics, you know that we have a contract with Instat. Do you know that? Instat is one of the statistics companies. And you saw what Instat did at the WAFU uh, tournament. We are going to engage Insta to provide statistics even on refereeing now from next season. They will provide statistics on players because some of these uh, manual ways of doing things are not scientific. I always read assists and I don't see assists on players in WAR because a lot of you don't go and watch matches in WAR. <laughs> yes, you don't go there and it's not on television. You always concentrate on Accra and Kumasi matches. Pardon me? Yes. It's not your fault because the opportunity to is not there. You know, but instead will help all of us to generate the statistics. When as the Chum was voted as the best player at the World Food Tournament, it was just not a fluke. It was backed by statistics. The ev evidence was there. It will show you the number of kilometers he's done in the game, the number of passes he made, successful ones, unsuccessful ones, the tackles he's made. It's all there. So we need to go scientific rather than depending on people's instincts on, on the choice of best players, <laughs> the best referee, uh, the best assist when there is no assist, and so forth and so on. So we are on the, the right path. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, no, we have to leave here because the president is traveling now. His flight is about... Pardon me. Yeah, start times you do it. Start times. Yeah. The president has to travel now. now. I'm going to Russia for the World Cup draw. And you know that I'm also the president of the Africa contingent to the FIFA World Cup. We have a meeting tomorrow in Russia. So if you keep me here, I won't go. And they'll blame you, you know. <laughs> so the rest articulated this position of journalists. Journalists are like any other Ghanaian. No Ghanaian has the right to assault another Ghanaian. Nobody can take the law into your hands. So we want to assure you that with security at our venues, we will ensure that anybody who takes the law into his hands or her hands is dealt with. We will report the hand over the person to the police to deal with you. But I would also like to appeal to not only you as journalists, but other sp uh, spectators, not to engage in any provocative conduct that will attract 
violence being visited on your person, even though nobody has the right to beat you. <laughs> you know, let's, let's be very mindful of that. For me, if I go to a public place, I position myself in a way that it doesn't interfere with somebody's rights. You may do something and incur somebody's displeasure, and it gives you a slap, even though he has no right to do that. So let's conduct ourselves well in that regard. But nobody has the right to slap you or beat you up. For even if you offend the law, you should hand you over to the police to send you to court for prosecution. Let's live uh, like people in a civilized society and not people in the jungle where uh, the fittest of, uh, is the, fitter, uh, the survival of the fittest. Yeah, Jerry. Uh, so, Jerry, yeah, uh, two questions then. First, I think you touched a bit on that, right? And I would, I would love if you expand uh, briefly on that. Um, how is sponsorship looking like um, you know, with, the, with the local, with the Gambian universities? Because I, what, one of the things, one of the highlights you mentioned was um, you know, how the, the local clubs are now going to be. Of course, the buck stops with the boss. <laughs> it's normal. It's normal. The fact that you are blamed doesn't mean that uh, that's the end of the road. We are humans and we are liable to so many limitations. Uh, you do your best and then there may be shortcomings here and there. That's why we're organizing a seminar like this, to review the work of the Football Association and see where the limitations are and what we can do to overcome those challenges. So I take responsibility for everything, positive and negative. But there are some which are also beyond my control. You know, <laughs> there are when you do a SWOT analysis, you have external factors that influence your work, and you can't do anything about it. If we're a farmer who depends on nature for your cultivation, there is drought. <laughs> you can't blame the farmer so much. In football, it happens sometimes. But having said that, I think that we are always <coughs> on a continuous review of the methods we apply, the policies we pursue, the programs that we undertake to see whether they are making any impact. If we are doing the same thing and not achieving the, say, a, a, a good result, it means we have to change. For some time now, there have been serious criticisms about the way the Premier League is managed. That's why we are introducing new measures <coughs> to see if it will help. But I'm hopeful that it will make the desired effect. And I'm also hopeful that the biggest challenge, which is funding for clubs, with our new strategies in place, we may be able to attract one or two sponsors. We have attracted, as I speak to you now, some minor sponsors, but we need major sponsors. People, the money backs, who bring in the millions and then change the terrain altogether. It's very, very important that we are able to get sponsors. Otherwise, the clubs cannot really function very well. Yeah, when we have sponsors, it will support the... the, 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 the yeah, youth football is very critical for us. And for me, when I speak, I also speak from experience. I'm not an FA president who came from the moon, or maybe I'm in a different club who was transferred to football. I own a club. So any club owner who complains of suffering, it's not different from me. I also go through the same suffering. My club, Wild Stars, travels more than any club in the Premier League. There's no club that travels more than one house does. So I spend more money than most of the clubs. So I need support more than any of them. <laughs> and so the motivation for me to look for sponsorship is higher in me than any other person. So I am really, really working hard with my colleagues to get sponsorship. We are leaving no stone on 10, and we are very, very hopeful that we will get a sponsor for the next Premier League. And from what happened yesterday in the review, Youth football and women's football are also suffering too much. And we think that whatever sponsorship we get for the Premier League, we should extend part of it to cover these other competitions. Yes, gentlemen. Yeah. Please, um, now I'm yes, sir. Please, uh, as your uh, 
The, the executive committee will meet again on 22nd December. On this day, we'll fix a date and venue for Congress. We didn't fix a date and venue for Congress because we need to prepare certain documents for Congress. One, the activity report. Two, proposals for amendment. Three, our accounts. All these things are not ready. We hope that by that day, they'll be ready, then we'll fix a date. We have two weeks notice to serve Congress to convene. And so we expect that in January we can fix a date for Congress. As soon as we decide on that, we'll publish it for your information. Last two questions, please. No, somebody who's not asked the question. You have asked the question, yeah. so let those who have been spoken. My name is Henry I'm the city of Germany. Okay. Um, Mr. President, I want to talk about two things. First one, oh, by the way, the match for the nation's after that you Sounds like a fascinating idea. I would like to know how soon. Next season. Just next season. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is our uh, statistics. We know that all around the world, statistics are key to football. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, pretty much is dominated by statistics and mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we mm -hmm. don't seem to have that. Mm -hmm. Some journalists have taken it upon themselves to even compare assists. We seem mm -hmm. to focus only on goals, and that's it. Mm -hmm. People have no idea who has made how many assists or saves and those things. And they're, and they're very important. I, I want to know if you have plans on partnering any statistics company somewhere, maybe Opta, to provide statistics for our news so that the media can have access to some of this information that will dominate our discussions. Uh, pre-matches and post-matches, exactly. so call it pastors and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the, the, the last thing is youth football, and I'm sure that we all recognize the importance of youth football. That's why we are where we are today. In the last few years, um, Mr. Year and his team have done a good job by picking uh, players from secondary schools.